Good morning, everybody. Uh, the reason for this video is to do the morphing part of the assignment to make a surrealism photograph based upon kind of what we saw from Eric Johansson is the project from now until the end of the quarter. And the requirements are going to be to, to have composited images in the photograph, meaning that there are images that aren't there that you're going to put in place, but they're not kind of morphed or mixed with anything else, and that they're just in the scene and they look natural in the scene. But also in the scene you set up, I want you to morph two or more things or objects together. So I want to give you an example of what it would be like. Now I showed you the giraffe picture with where I morphed myself onto the giraffe's neck, my upper body. So that's one way that you can handle morphing, but there's a whole bunch of other ways. When we morph is when we're taking two dissimilar objects and we're putting them together to make one object or creature. So today I got a few options. I took a bunch of photographs and let's see what we can do with them. All right, so I took a bunch of photographs this morning of some things around my house, outside my house, the sky, and what I want to do is I want to put some of them together. There's also pictures of me leaning in, certain, in a certain way. I want to put some of them together so that I'm creating a bit of a scene, but also that I'm morphing some things together aren't naturally one thing. So how can we do that? So let's pull in a picture to start with. Okay, so I'm gonna actually use a picture of the front of my house and I wanna change some of the background here. The trees are going to impede what I'm trying to do. So I wanna get rid of at least the ones on this side of the house. Notice that I'm in my crop tool. It started, it was. It must be the last tool that I used last time it started open with that open. I do want to talk about composition a little bit and usually I do this at the end of the project but since it's open already I'll do that right now. So one of the things that we should think about is where do we want to put our focus and if we click on any of these handles to drag you'll see that you get these white lines and they're they split the screen into three vertical and three horizontal boxes. So you have a total of nine boxes. And what happens is where these lines cross, here, 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 and here, are going to automatically be focal points of the picture. So if you want something to be the focal point, make sure that it's in that one of those spots. So one of the things is I don't need a lot of this below stuff. Um, so I want to raise that a bit and I want to be on this side of the house which is where I'm going to eliminate some of these trees but basically I'm going to be standing on the roof up here so I want a focal point that's going to work for that so I'm going to actually crop off even a little bit more at the bottom and I could lose a little bit of this side as well and give myself more of the clearing in fact why don't we do this so a lot more space is on top I don't need to see a lot of the, the trees over here we want to get rid of these trees here. Don't really need that edge of the house either so much. And that's going to give me a good amount of sky to work with over here. All right, so I'm going to click the check mark. And now I've cropped the house so that the focal point up here in this corner is the one that I'm going to be working with. Let's get off that tool so we don't mess with that image shape anymore. So again, that's something that I typically do at the end of the project, but doing it at the beginning of the project, at least it gives me an image that I wanna work with. All right, so let's add another picture and we can start working. First of all, actually before we add a, an image, what I want to do is I want to, as I said before, change the background a little bit. I wanna get rid of some of the trees in the background, but I wanna keep this tree in the front. So how do I go about doing that? There are lots of different ways that you can you can do things like that. One of the things I can do is I brought in some sky, a picture of sky. If you can see it over here, I don't know if you can see that part of my picture palette. Let's bring this out where you can see it. I took a picture of the sky up higher, and you can see it's it's a much cloudier looking sky than it is a little above the horizon. So if I drop that in, I will, and I can work that into the background, that's going to make it the picture work even better for me. So I'm just going to hit the check mark and accept it like it is there. I'm going to move it up and into the corner and I'm going to take the background picture, duplicate it, and I'm going to call this my mask layer and I'm going to click OK or hit enter and then I'm going to bring that right to the top. And now you see where we can see the entire picture below it. Next I'm going to go to the layer menu and I'm going to 
create a layer mask and hide it, hide all, just like we did on the other image, right? So now, if I make this middle layer more transparent, I can see what I want to work with. So I'm going to turn down the opacity. So now I can see through that a little bit. Working on the layer mask itself, I'm going to come in with the eraser tool and erase out the mask, as we did in the other project. So here I'm going to hit, the, hit E to get my eraser tool. And I'll make sure my eraser tool is nice and hard. And I can use a pretty big size for it at this part of the project. In fact, I'm going to make it much bigger. And I'm just going to erase that mask out for the front of the house and the roof. I don't want to get too close to the edge because I don't want to go over, although I can fix it just by painting the mask back in. I do want to be able to see what I'm doing pretty well in those areas. All right, let's zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in on the edge of the roof here. I want to get everything that belongs to the roof to stay on the roof. See, I came close to the edge there, but I didn't go over, which is good. I'm going to go back to my eraser tool, so I'm going to hit E again. I hit Z before to, to get to my zoom tool. I'm going to make that smaller. And I'm going to go right up to the edge of the roof and erase out some of my layer mask. And again, I can be pretty rough below the edge, but when I get to where I want to be right at the edge, I want to go slower and more carefully to get that exactly the way I want it. And I'm going to move it over, do a little bit more, I'm just trying to get right to the edge here without going over. Leaving some of the edge behind is okay. I'm going to eventually get smaller with my brush and fix that. Okay, um, so basically I'm going to get keep making my brush smaller and smaller, get closer and closer to the edge. I may flatten the brush out a little bit so that it's not leaning so far over. It's at a slight angle, so I'm going to try and match that angle. And I'm going to try and get really right up to the edge there without going over too, too much. And I can take that out. All right, I'm going to stop it here and finish the edge of the roof because this is kind of what stuff from the last video. So you don't really need to see this. Uh, what I want to show you is what I'm going to do with the tree. So I want to focus on that a little bit more. And also we can work on the rest of the photograph. All right. Um, I just wanted to come back in here for a second. I'm going to zoom out. So I'm going to go Command Zero. Okay, so I'm zoomed out and I, I didn't really do much else after what I was speaking about because I wanted to show you a way to kind of make this a little bit easier to get the edge of the roof and that's with the polygonal tool. So I'm going to select the polygonal lasso tool. The roof edges are kind of straight so it's kind of easy to click on the edge and then get right out to the point there and then come over to here get right out to the point again and then down here has already been done so I can just kind of make any shape down there quickly and I have a selection and now I can only erase inside the selection so if I go back to this image here and come back to my eraser tool and I want to just make it bigger because to show you that I can and let's make it round again so now, if I erase, I can't erase outside that line, and now I have a much better straight line edge of the roof, and it worked much faster than trying to get in there. Now, I still do need to add in some of these other things, right? But if I were to turn this on full opacity, so come down to here, bring the opacity back to 100, and you can see now that I've eliminated everything over the roof. And I've got a good clean view of the house with the background, but it's not looking too supernatural yet, right? So let's continue working there. Okay, so I've kind of got the roof where I want it to be now, and it looks pretty good. One of the things I'm noticing is the sky is not exactly filling to the edge on this side. So what I could do is I could be on the sky layer. In fact, let's call this sky so that we don't get confused as, as it gets a little more complicated and I can edit, transform, and scale. And just drag the handle out just a little bit to make sure that it's covering on this end, and let's look on the other end as well. It looks like it's covering there. So now I can hit the checkbox, and that little silvery edge will be gone. So let's take a look at what we've got. I'm going to go Command-0. Uh, if you're on a PC, you're gonna go Control-0, and you can see that I've got the roof 
and the sky behind it has now been changed. If we hide this, you can see it looks totally different. So I gotta come back in and add a couple of these things, but I wanna start focusing on the tree and how to, how to work with the tree. All right, so if, again, I make this layer somewhat opaque so that I can see through it, what I can do is I can take the eraser tool and zoom in on different parts of the tree that I want to include and I can just kind of trace that. So obviously I'm going to need to work with a pretty small brush and we're going to work on this layer mask up here. So notice that I'm here. I want to be clicked in on the layer mask when I'm erasing. All right, so for example, let's zoom in and hit Z and zoom into this side where the tree is and go back to my eraser tool. I'm going to hit E and you see there's a little still big Maybe make it a touch smaller, so 14. Let's bring it down to 12. And I can kind of trace the branches of the tree as it goes. These are going to get narrower as they go up. So I probably want to make this smaller and smaller as it goes up. What I don't want is to get exposed too much of other things that I don't want. So I'm going to have to come back with the paintbrush tool and fix those. Make sure that you're including just the branches that you want if you're doing something like this. And this can apply to other things as well, not just trees. This is a way you can do hair that sticks out and flies away. So notice this is all pretty much exposed now. So if I want to get those little dots there that are the other color sky, so I could come back in with a paintbrush tool and paint in the mask again. So I want to go very small. Let's bring it around and just one pixel at a time. I could zoom in further and just paint this back in so that it's not showing in my image. In fact, some of this is from a tree that I don't want to keep. So I could just paint across that. Let's make that a little bigger. So not being very effective at one pick through. Kind of hard when you have things opaque because you're not seeing what you're doing until you bring that back up. Let's bring that back up and take a look and see where we are. So you can see once once I get this painted, I could come back in and fix up those spots. But you see, I'm starting to get some of that tree extended above the line. So let me come do, do some of that painting and I'll come back on. When I just want to show you here that um, just a quick check in. I've gotten some of those branches starting to extend out. All the trees in the background are still hidden. There's some little areas where it's kind of white and gleamy that I'm going to have to come back and address. Um, but I'm really working. I've been about, at it about um, 10 minutes now, um, starting to get in some of the tree without and still eliminating the background stuff. So if I come back to here, I can see I just, when I painted back in, I missed, got part of the roof there, so I want to fix that. So I want to erase what I did over there, keep the edge of the roof intact. I also missed here a little bit when I was fixing some things. So I got quite a bit more to go. I'm going to make this transparent again. So you can see that I'm covering a lot of the major branches. And making decisions about what I want to keep and what I, what I want to get rid of is going to be important to making this look kind of realistic. All right, so I'll be back one more. Okay, I'm now about a half hour in and you can see a lot of the trees starting to come together. I'm gonna keep working it and add back the roof items I need to add back. And I will be back as soon as I can, but I think it's coming along pretty nicely. You see how I'm isolating that tree. Just a reminder, if I get rid of that, I'm getting hiding all of those other trees because they're not gonna work for my picture. All right, so right now I'm still seeking out the main branches here, and then I'll add some of the sub branches in by getting thinner and thinner. Notice these as at the top are starting to get really thin, and I'm going to have to come back in and paint a little bit where there's too much of highlight because it's kind of dark and cloudy. All right. Okay, so for the sake of brevity, I'm going to show you this is the picture that I'm using. My wife took it of me this morning, reaching. This is going to be a lighter colored part of the sky, I guess, where the sun will, will be rising or something. Obviously, it's not the same darkness as the outdoor darkness. I'm going to have to do some adjustments here, but I try to get the perspective as the way I wanted it. So let me just 
See, I missed the part at the bottom, so it's probably not going to select all of me there. And actually, it did. It came pretty close. All right, so I'm going to pause this. You've seen me do this. Okay, so now I have deleted the background for that image. I can, while I'm on that layer, go to layer and matting and defringe just to make sure that we're knocking off any extra pixels that are on the edge that don't really fit in with the image. All right, so I'm kind of floating in air. I'm going to name this me so that I know what that layer is without too much hassle. And obviously I need to scale and reposition myself. So let's scale first. Uh, so I'm going to go edit, transform, and scale. And I'm going to make myself smaller. And I'll click the check mark to accept that. And I'm going to put myself here on the roof. I'm still big for the size of the house. I could scale myself smaller. Um, but it's surrealism, so I can also kind of accept that the way it is a little bit. Obviously, I want to see some shadow at my feet and so forth. And I want to see some of what's going on in the sky. So let's make that a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go uh, edit transform again and let's scale it down again and scale it some more. There we go. All right, now I want myself up toward the edge but not over the edge. So let's let's uh, leave that for now and actually be more over here so that when I do, I have some room for some other letters. So now I'm going to leave that and I'm going to come back to it. I took a couple of angle shots of one of my son's letter puzzles. I'm going to import this one and this one also, and I'm going to kind of subtract or remove a few letters, isolate them as I see fit, move them to separate layers and so forth. So let's put that on. For now, I'm going to just accept it. And you can see that we're kind of looking up, which is our view. We're on the ground looking up toward the sky anyway, so we're gonna see some of the bottoms, which is why I did this angle. So let's pick out a couple of these letters to work with. Let's, let's put a D. I'm going to try that object select tool again. See if I could select the D. It's probably going to select some of the green that's under the D as well, which it did, I think. But if I zoom in there, I can see better. And also, I want to get rid of what's inside here, right? So before I do that, let me duplicate this a couple of times because I want to pick out a few letters and have them on separate layers. So I'm going to duplicate layer and duplicate layer and duplicate layer. I may not need all the ones I'm going to do because uh, I don't have a lot of sky space, but for now I'm going to leave those there and hide them. All right, so let's zoom in. I'm going to hit uh, Z to get to my zoom tool and click in on that letter there. And you can see it is selecting some of the bottom, so I want to take that out. So I'm going to go to my lasso tool. Just try to be quick without messing it up and eliminate that. I'm going to cut out this part also. This I really need the lasso tool for. So let's go back to the lasso tool. Although there is some straight line, there's way too much curve. It's pretty good. I can fix the little pieces. If I zoom in more, I would see them a little better. But I'm going to say that's good for now. I want to rasterize the layer. And I want to invert the selection, Command-Shift-I or Control-Shift-I. And then I'm going to hit Delete. All right, so that's my first letter. What do I want to do with that letter is I want to kind of desaturate it and then paint it a sky color. So what I could do is I can look for, in my images, a picture of sky that's nice and blue. I should have that someplace. And then I'm going to kind of coat this image with the, with the sky. So I'm going to shut, shut it off while I search for that picture, and I'll be back uh, soon. All right, so I found a nice picture that has some sky in it, and I dropped it over onto a layer above where that letter D is. Let's zoom out. Command zero. All right, let's move this. I want to get some of that nice cloud in there, as well as the blue sky. Let's make it a little bit transparent so I can see what I'm working with. Okay, so I've got some sky, I've got some clouds in there. That's not bad. So now if I come down to this layer here, I can select pixels, come back up to this layer, 
and I can rasterize first. Um, so now I should have already inverted this. I'm going to rasterize it. Hit delete. Uh, invert this selection. I didn't invert the selection yet. Control Shift I or Command Shift I and then hit delete. Um, and you can see if I bring that back to full opacity, you can see that I have the shape, a piece of the sky, the shape of that letter D. I don't exactly want that. So let me go make that invisible for a minute. And working on the layer below, which we're going to call this the D layer, I want to adjust the color. Let's go for it. Let's go for a color adjustment first. Let's go image adjustments, color balance, and let's move this out. And let's move it more toward the blues and the cyans. We just want to get out of the greens quite as much as we can, giving ourselves a more of a blue color that we can work with. That's kind of not sky blue. That's right now is the midtones the shadows we can go more blue and there aren't really any highlights on there all right let's do it like that and let's see what it looks like now i'm going to turn this sky layer back on and we're going to add a blending mode to it so we want to see the layer through it but so that it looks like we got some sky going there so we want it to have that three dimensionality and also be sky that's looking pretty cool so screen is working okay. Dodge is weird. Hard light works okay. Linear light works okay. I'm gonna go with hard light. All right, let's zoom in a little bit and see what that looks like. I'm gonna hit Z and click on here to zoom in. And now what I wanna do is I wanna scale that and put it in my hands here. So how am I going to do that? Well, I can do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to merge sky down to the letter D, so the letter D is permanently changed like that, and that'll make things easier. I can move it. I'm going to kind of put it where I want it in my hands, so I need to scale. So I'm going to go Edit, Transform, and Scale. And if I bring myself forward, so move my picture over it, it kind of doesn't look like I'm grabbing it either, right? So I need this hand behind and this hand in front. So let's put, let's go back below. I'm going to duplicate me. So duplicate the layer. So that's me copy. I'm going to put that over the D and I'm going to add a layer mask. So I'm going to go layer mask, hide all, right? And now I want to reveal this hand, but leave that one sort of hidden. So I'm going to come back with my eraser tool to erase the mask. Let's hit E to get to our eraser tool. My head needs to also be in front. I should probably move the letter a little bit because I got kind of a weird tangent going on over there. That's not too bad. It's, it's not right at the point. But we're right at the point I'd have a problem. And then to see where exactly my hand is, I could change the opacity of the layer below it so I can kind of see my hand better and I probably want a somewhat smaller brush to get in where the fingers are maybe zoom in some more so let's do that let's make the brush somewhat smaller it's nine right now I'm gonna bring it down to four and yeah let's zoom in I'm gonna hit Z zoom into right to my hand so I can see what I'm doing better and it doesn't matter if it pixelates, I'll be able to judge which pixels to color and which one's not. And I'm going to go back to my eraser tool, so I'm going to hit E. And come right here in my thumb. I want to be right against the edges without going over. And remember, if I do go over, I could just paint in the edges back in. Let's go down a little bit more. Let's 
So the sky is providing some of the, the, the lighter day sky is providing some of that highlight that's above and to the right of me, which is kind of a good thing. So let's zoom out, Command Zero. Okay, so now I'm placing the D into the sky. I want to have some of the sky already established up here. So what I'm actually morphing is the sky with the letters, right? The letters are going to be a part of the sky. So one of the things is once they're up there, I may or may not want to have more of them looking where I'm seeing the bottom. I actually may delete the, these, but I'm going to leave them there for now in case I need them. And I'm going to look for that other puzzle image, which should be down at the bottom of my images here. Okay, so let's use this one. Drag it on. And I'm going to bring that way to the top. And we're going to pick a few letters. And we're going to cut sky out of them and place them. And we're just going to use the tops of the letters here so that they kind of merge in with the sky better. Let's do A, B, and C as if they're done already. So let's select that now. So the first thing I want to do is I have to, these are a little bit more straight on, so they're not as hard to get. Let's see if we can select them with this. Select all of them, A, B, and C. And it sort of did. We got a good portion of it. We got more than we need. So we can, we can definitely eliminate some of the selection, but we're, we're in pretty decent shape for starters. So let's zoom in. I'm going to hit Z, click in here, make it so that I'm seeing what I want to see, and we're going to subtract from the selection. All right, let's do this. Let's try this out. So we want just the surfaces. So I'm going to eliminate all of that. Um, I want to eliminate the center part as well. Okay, here I'm going to add some stuff to it and take some stuff out. So let's eliminate while we're on the eliminate tool. We can eliminate that. We can eliminate this part of the selection over here. So let's get the rest of this added in. Okay, um, so now I can eliminate the parts I don't need. Okay, let's add that back in. Okay, now on to C. So, see it looks like all of the, most of the letter, because it's yellow, it didn't grab all of it. Most of the letter, though, is intact there. All right, so now I can subtract out what I don't need. So I'm going to go to subtract part and eliminate what I don't need. There we go. All right, let's see how that looks. Okay, I'm going to zoom out, Command-0. I'm going to invert the selection, but let's rasterize the image first. Let's go to select and inverse and just delete everything. All right, so now I have A, B, C. They're all on one layer. Um, I could have put them on separate layers so that I could adjust them differently. Uh, I'm going to deselect. Um, so Command D. I'm going to use the Move tool to place them into the sky. And I missed cutting out that part. Let's go fix that. So let's hit our Z for Zoom tool. And I'm going to select this part here. All right, that's not too bad. And I'm just going to delete. Okay. So now let's zoom out again. Command minus or Control minus. You can see my edges are really rough. I can defringe, but that's not going to really fix much of that. But for now, I'm going to leave it just so that you get the basic idea of what I'm doing here is I'm morphing the sky. So now I need a co the copy of the sky picture. Let's bring that over the, let's make this ABC layer, ABC, the sky copy we have got over there and we can drag this command uh, to select and 
use the move tool, drag it over there. And that's not too bad of a placement. I'm going to change the opacity to 100% and hide it for a minute. And I'm going to work with this layer. I do want to alter these colors or desaturate them. Let's, let's desaturate them so they look a little bit more like the gray in the background. So let's go image adjustment and desaturate, which will give us a gray tone, right? And then we're going to use a blending mode, but I want to cut those out. So let's stay with this. We're going to right click in here and select pixels so we can see the selections there. And then we're going to go up to sky copy. We're going to invert the selection. So we're going to go command shift and I at the same time to invert the selection. And then we hit delete. It's a vector we have to rasterize. All right. And delete. All right. So now we can see that the ABC are morphed in with the sky, right? But what we're not seeing is the continuity of the background sky with the other sky color, right? So we do need to fix that. So let's select, deselect, merge down. And I can do a few things here. Probably want D to go over here, right? So I can move them over this way. And I can fit them not, not in the tree. So I can kind of arrange them around the tree. That works. The edges are kind of very ragged, which kind of some, somewhat works good for sky. Let's go to that sky layer and see if we can blue it up a little bit. Okay, so it turns out that I was working on this a little bit after the last place that I left off. And for some reason, when I clicked start, my recording, my screen recording didn't work. So I lost a good portion of the, the image. This is what the final image looks like. And I'm gonna talk you through what I did to get it here, layer by layer, step by step a little bit. All right, so what you last saw was I had ABC in the sky. I think the sky was still gray and ABC did not have a little bit of a stroke around it to imply that it's puzzle pieces being stuck in. So what I did was ABC was all the way up at the top. If you remember correctly, it was the top layer I brought it down below the mask layer so that I could actually put it behind the tree branches. So it looks like those were already installed, they're up in the sky. And then I created this open puzzle piece space where I can stick the D and it looks like I'm reaching up to stick the D in there. So to create this, what I did was I installed another iteration of the letter puzzle. I did a selection around the D, so that just the surface of the D was showing without the depth. And then I created another layer, which is this layer one here. I'm gonna rename that. I'm gonna call that D, for lack of a better word, socket. That's the, the input part of the puzzle where we're going to stick the letter D, right? And then you can see I put an effect on it called bevel and emboss. Let's see what that did. Let's let's make the that puzzle invisible again. Um, so that's this this layer over here. So let's turn off that effect on the D socket layer. So you see it's just a flat gray D. I resized it and placed it where I wanted to. I wanted part of it hidden behind here so it looks like I'm actually sticking that up into that area. I'm reaching for it. So what I did for that is I went to FX I went down to bevel and emboss and I clicked on that and that gave me the layer styles that I was looking for and I chose a couple of things here. So I chose the outer bevel. I went through all of the different possibilities, emboss, below emboss. Emboss, make, emboss makes it look more like things are coming out. Uh, I thought the outer bevel looked best with the down side stroke, so then the direction down. And then I adjusted the size and the depth of the place where that D is going to be installed. So with that, you know, the angle is at 30 degrees. It's coming in this direction, the light. So 
I think with that it all worked out pretty well. Highlight mode is screen. So let's cancel that and put that back on so that you can see what that looks like now. So I'm going to turn that effect back on. And you see it looks like it's indented into the sky there. And it's a place for that D to go. Now, going back to the ABC layer, the effect on there is the stroke. If I turn that off, it kind of looks okay, but it, it kind of looks like they're just there. They're just floating. So I wanted it to look like they kind of have an indent around them where they were stuck in, which is what happens with puzzle pieces. So what I did with that effect was I went to FX and down to Stroke. And what I did was I clicked on the color and I chose... So when I do that, uh, the color picker pops up and I chose this color here. And that gave me sort of nothing because it's the same as what's going on in the background, right? So in order to make it pop out more, what I did was I pushed it over to a darker spot. I could have gone darker in that direction, or from here, I could have gone darker in this direction. So this is more saturated. I went with the more saturated rather than the less saturated darker. And I'm gonna click cancel there again. Um, so I gave it a size seven. I have it positioned outside the letter so that the letter looks like it's intact. And the color is not so different that it doesn't look like it belongs there. But you can see, I'm gonna cancel that out again. It kind of makes it look more like puzzle pieces stuck in where we're seeing some of the shadow around the edges of the puzzle pieces. So the puzzle pieces are stuck into the sky. We have an opening for piece D and I'm reaching up to put D, D in. With D, with the letter D here, I did some image adjustments on here to match the colors better. Also the sky, which was gray, I actually added color to that. And the way I did that, let's go down to that sky level. So if we turn off the smart effect, you see I have a black and white sky, smart filters. And what I did was I put a U and saturation filter on there. So again, that would be image adjustments, U and saturation. And that's putting it back on what I had off. But basically I moved it more toward the blues, added some lightness to it, saturated it, and I clicked the colorize button. The colorize button is what, what helped me add the color. It kind of made it red at first. Uh, let's see if we can preview that. See how it kind of makes it a reddish color, but then I dra dragged the U over to the blues and then added a little bit more saturation to make it bluer to match the color a little better and also lighter so that it wasn't sticking out too much. So I sort of still have a gray sky but it's more of a blue, blue gray sky. I'm going to cancel that one out and just turn the other one back on, the smart filter back on because I spent some time adjusting that. So those were the changes I made. And one last thing I'd like to do is we talked about making me look a little bit more settled on the roof there and doing that by adding a little bit of a drop shadow under my feet, right? So how do I do that? I'm going to go down to the layer that I'm on. So that should be the layer named me. Okay. And so underneath that layer, uh, which is above the mask layer, let's do it this way. It's going to look weird at first, but let's try adding a drop shadow. So if I add a drop shadow, obviously that's weird. I do not need to be making a shadow shape on the sky, right? But if this is my light source, my shadow should be on the roof. So let's figure out what to do there. So first of all, on the roof, there are some shadow areas. So I'm going to select a shadow color from the roof area. So let's go with, the, this is a little bit darker over here. And I'm going to click OK for now because we could always adjust that more. OK, so now how do I get that from there down onto the roof? So I can do a few things, right? So let me click OK and accept it. And now on the, on the drop shadow, under Effects, I can click on the effect. And I can, as we did yesterday, copy the layer or I can create a layer. So I'm going to create a layer, click OK. And now the shadow, so me's drop shadow, is on a whole other layer. So now I can use the Move tool to move it, right? I could rotate it. So let's go Edit. I'm going to free transform this time and I'm going to wait till I have a curved thing and rotate it to lay it down more onto the roof. Let's move it down here. It's obviously too 
too wide and probably not stretched out enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide some of it behind my legs there. And I'm going to kind of squish it in this direction. So that's kind of laid down on there. I want to distort it. So let's check mark. And we're going to go edit, transform, and distort. And then I'm going to just kind of drag it out more onto the roof there. This is really going to help it look like I'm up on that roof with that lighted sky putting it in by having a nice strong drop shadow laying on the roof there. Um, notice how it takes the shape of my hands are already up, so those are already in the picture a bit. And I think if I click the check mark, that's going to look pretty good. It is a little dark. I could lighten it up. I could probably best let some of the roof show through. It's already on multiply, but if I add a little transparency to it, that's going to even make it look more natural. More like a shadow, right, than, than like a blob painted on the roof. So you see now it looks more shadow-like. And that's pretty good there. Uh, I'm going to go a little darker than that. That's pretty good. That's going to really help plant me on the roof, like as if I'm actually standing on there, just having that shadow there. Uh, those drop shadows are really super important. So when I'm done with it, which I think I am at this point, I'm going to go File. I'm going to go Save As. And I already gave it a name, so I'm going to keep the name that I gave it. But the reason I'm going Save As is because I want to demonstrate how you would save it. So Installing the Morning Sky is the name I gave it with Sutton attached to it. And it's in my folder that's Exemplars, which is in my Photoshop folder, which is in my Plain View Obet Page folder. So if you're working from school, you can create folders similar to yourself, right? And put them in there. The format is a Photoshop file. And I'm going to click save and now it's going to say it's already in there do i want to replace it or do i want to cancel and give it another name i'm going to replace it i'm going to click ok and i want to export it file export and we'll export it as a png i'm going to do it as a png for now what i would like you to do is save it as a jpeg which you know how to do that already i'm going to click save it's going to tell me again that that's already there because i already created it but i didn't have the shadow in and it did make some slight adjustments. So I'm going to click Replace. And so now I should be able to go to my Finder folder, which is over here. And I should be able to find the image. And that is the PNG image of my surrealistic morphing. What I morphed was the sky and the letters, right? So I added a little color to the sky, but I have the, the morning colors really popping through a little bit more in the letters here. They're kind of morphed together as if it's a puzzle fitting the morning sky into the, as pieces. And here I am placing that, that letter D. Probably could have made some more EFG sockets over here that are not filled yet, but we can leave that to the imagination. All right, so that's it, and uh, good luck with your surrealism project. Again, you have to use your own pictures. Don't find things on the internet set up and take your own pictures. I took about 20 pictures this morning. I used seven or eight of them and you'll you'll take pictures you don't need but uh, you will hopefully find lots of pictures you do. And that's what the project is. I'll see you in school and online and if anybody has any questions or concerns we can address them then.